So continuing our discussion about the nuclear reaction or nuclear fusion and fission reaction, uh, we have already discussed a physics behind the both the fusion and fission reaction. As I said, like the, the more the binding energy, the, the energy held within the bond of the atom, the more stable it is or the atom is. Uh, the binding energy is the amount of energy that is held within the bond on the atom. The more stable the nuclei is, the more the, the binding energy is. Right? And if the more the binding energy is, it will neither split or neither fuse. So iron itself, I said earlier, the iron itself is the most top of the binding energy. It is the most stable nucleus in the, the in the in the periodic table. Uh, for other atom less than the binding energy, which has got less than the uh, the the other atom, uh, have got the binding energy less than the iron atom. The 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 atom which has got the or the element which has got the the atomic number less than the iron, they would fuse together. To form the, uh, the the more stable nuclei and that stable nuclei towards the iron and that what we the process we call it as the fusion reaction uh, while the atom which has got uh, greater atomic number than the the iron atom uh, they will uh, they will split itself to form the stable nuclei and that stable nuclei towards the iron that's what we call it as a nuclear fission so when we when when the atoms are or the nuclei are fused together, they are called as the fusion reaction. And when they are splitting together, uh, splitting itself, they are called as the fusion reaction. So that having said that, nuclear fusion takes place when the atom nuclei split into two or more small nuclei. These small nuclei are called as the fusion products. Uh, particles such as neutron, uh, photon, and alpha particles are usually released. This is actually an exothermic reaction which releases huge amount of energy, uh, and that most of the energy is released in terms of kinetic energy. Now, fission uh, is considered as form of element transmutation. And what we call it as a transmutation process when one element is actually transformed into another element uh, since changing the number of proton and electron uh, proton of the element essentially change the element type so that mean like when when it is actually split it when the in a fission reaction when when uh, the element itself is split it so it is actually transmuted from one element into another element for example like uh, by starting a nuclear reaction, now ordinary uh, uranium is bombarded with the neutron. So uranium-235 is bombarded with neutro neutron to, be, to form a uranium-236. Now. now this uranium-236 is not a stable element. Uh, and obviously, uh, the, the, there is actually more now much more binding energy than the, the, the normal uranium. So when it is bombarded with the, the neutron, it will be splitting into boron, beryllium and krypton. And by releasing two neutron and 177 million electron volt of energy. So that's, that's what, having said that, the uranium itself will be splitted, transmuted into beryllium and krypton by releasing two neutron and Huge amount of energy. Now, this three neutron is now available for further reaction. What we call it as a chain reaction. These three neutron will further react with with the the uranium, which is if, which if available, then it will be further destabilized. Then it will be further further uh, splitted and releasing amount of energy. Even these neutron would be actually bombarding itself with the or the reacting itself with the 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 product which we call it as a fission product and by by releasing further amount of energy now this is what we call it as a just a basic physics behind the nuclear electricity uh, the, sorry physics behind the nuclear energy and obviously this is what we 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 are looking for the 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 reaction we are looking to to produce heat energy 
and as said that heat energy would be utilized to to make steam and the electrical power so this is more and more uh, the physics behind the nuclear nuclear electricity generation but this is this itself nuclear program over the century is not as simple as it was uh, during the cold war there was a huge uh, I would say like a race towards the weaponization program. There was a huge race towards the making the nuclear weapons, nuclear bombs, and so on and so forth. It was rather than actually a good a good uh, uh, physics actually lead us towards the disastrous nuclear reaction or nuclear programs. So obviously, then came the United Security Council, and that actually agree on the text of comprehensive test ban treaty which we call it as a ctbt and that ctbt prevent many nations by 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 utilizing its nuclear energy to uh, or by by actually um forcing many nations uh, not going towards the nuclear in a nuclear weapon program rather than just staying towards staying with the limits of the nuclear electricity generation uh, but that's actually not been 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 one of the uh, the, the what we call it as a history um not, not a good history of a nuclear nuclear energy um yes we would be actually looking at the the combined cycle power plant in which the efficiency of the combined cycle power plant is much much more than the nuclear power plants Let's say if I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the nuclear power plant efficiency, it will be roughly around somewhere in around 28 to 32%. While the, in, in a new, uh, combined cycle power plant, the efficiency goes up to as much as like 62, or even the commercial power plants are now having the efficiency of 62%. So that having said like, uh, if we have got such a, a high efficiency power plants, so why we would need a nuclear pro program? So why would need such a program in which we are we are utilizing a low efficient power plants to produce the electricity? And obviously, there's one other other thing which is actually related to the, the to the 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 nuclear power plants, uh, and that is actually the radioactivity of it, uh, mining of the nuclear nuclear material, and obviously dumping of the nuclear nuclear uh, rods or nuclear fuel after it's been utilized. While with the nuclear, uh, with, with the combined cycle power plants, we do not have got such of the complexity. And if we have got not such a complexity, so that's that's what what we are looking at. Like rather than actually making a like a nuclear uh, power generation pro uh, projects, we are much more concerned with the, uh, or we are much more interested in making the commercialized combined cycle power plant. Uh, this was one of the reason like when when Iranian was actually trying to uh, make or trying to make their nuclear program active uh, the European Union uh, they were actually they have off offered them uh, the more efficient uh, combined cycle power plant uh, rather than they were actually allowed to continue with the with the nuclear power plants and and then uh, that's um, in one of the deal and um, the european union or the 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 um, european people they have offered uh, around like three three to four uh, combined cycle power plant in exchange for uh, stopping their nuclear nuclear program uh, and then there was actually a political opposition towards the nuclear power um, and that's much more uh, highly de debated uh, after Fukushima Daiichi disaster in, back in 2011, uh, when people were much more concerned about the nuclear safety, the nuclear power plant safeties. Uh, so in Sweden and Germany, uh, they are shutting down their nuclear power plants altogether by 2022. Uh, the Japanese, as I said, like uh, Fukushima Daiichi in 2020, uh, 2011 disaster, uh, now they are actually also shutting down the Fukushima uh, Fukushima Daiichi power plants. Um, as discussed in previous lecture, uh, the USSR uh, 
and the former USSR states, uh, which include Slovakia, which include Ukraine, and which include uh, many other states in which they were having, uh, Romania as well, they were having a nuclear reactors or nuclear power plants installed. Now they have got, now they, there is actually a problem of av availability of the fund even to maintain nuclear power plant production. So that's, they are actually a little bit in a, in a, in a disaster form as well. But uh, back in 2008, actually, when there was um, a, what we call it as a financial crunch in most of the European countries and the United States, uh, they would start selling their nuclear technology, or if I would say like the civil nuclear technology. And they have also, let's say, if you might remember, um, U.S. signed its uh, the when they signed the um, U.S. India civil nuclear agreement back in summer 2010 around, uh, but the framework was actually started in 2005. Uh, so that mean like uh, they these things actually uh, provided further expansion of the nuclear. Uh, energy or for sale a nuclear power plant around the world in which even the United, UAE have also installed many nuclear power plants even even the Bangladesh have uh, installed nuclear power plants and even uh, one of the major leading uh, country which is actually China and India they have installed so many of the nuclear power plants in their country uh, also because of that aggressive uh, carbon dioxide limitations uh, the nuclear power, power power plants they are highly subsidized. Uh, the it, it subsidized in terms of the coal power plants. If I if I'm comparing it with the coal power plants, uh, as the coal coal power plant they are producing uh, aggressive. Uh, if I was saying a much more carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide have got the tax carbon tax we call it large one carbon taxes. They they shifted most of the economy are now shifting towards the clean energy and nuclear is one of the energy which are looking for the which they are looking for the less carbon dioxide production so this is what actually a little bit back, background or political background about the nuclear power plants or nuclear reaction now moving forward to the other uh, nuclear reaction or if i would say nuclear power plants and that is what we call it as a nuclear fusion reaction um, as early said, like uh, nuclear fusion reaction, the reaction in which two or more nuclei combine together to form a new element with a higher atomic number. The energy in fusion, and obviously that would relate it to E is equal to MC here, and that is much more than the nuclear fusion. Uh, if I say like much more in nuclear uh, than nuclear fusion, that I mean like per unit mass, per unit mole, that would be much, much more than the nuclear fusion. So. Uh, discussing the, the the hydrogen itself, when hydrogen is bombarded with the the one of the neutron, it will be actually becoming deuterium. And obviously, another ne neutron uh, or oh, sorry, two neutron when bombarded with the with the hydrogen, it become tritium. Uh, said earlier, like this, deuterium and tritium uh, are not are, are the the not non-stable isotope of the hydrogen. Deuterium and tritium would react with each other to form helium nuclei, helium having at atomic mass of four and atomic number of two. Helium nuclear, uh, nucleus and by formation uh, or by releasing one neutron and 17.6 mega electron volt of energy. Uh, said earlier that it is actually per unit mass of the uh, nuclear nu energy released by the nuclear fusion. So nuclear fusion is much more than the nuclear fission. So once this amount of energy is released, obviously this, then it become a chain reaction. And by making a chain reaction, that would mean like the number of neutrons would react with the hydrogen atom or the helium atom found, uh, formed. And then obviously it will be, then the, the reaction will continue. But if you can look at the reaction itself, uh, we have utilized one neutron in this one deuterium and two neutron in the tritium. So that means we have utilized three neutron in the reaction while we are having one neutron output from the 
uh, uh, from the reaction itself. So that that means like the fusion reaction in fusion reaction the neutron is absorbed. Now to that when the neutron is absorbed the reaction will definitely stop. So we need a neutron multiplier for the tritium production and for the for the reaction as well. So normally in the nuclear reactor or a nuclear uh, weapon, if I would say nuclear uh, fusion uh, reaction, uh, we actually provide with a blanket of uh, uh, lithium or a blanket of uh, uh, sorry for uh, let uh, blanket of beryllium in the nuclear site. So when we are providing them, actually, for example, uh, beryllium nine react with the neutron to give you two beryllium and the helium atom actually. So that means like one neutron is used in beryllium uh, and that gives us as a two neutron as well. So that means like we will be having an extra neutron which would be provided to the nuclear fusion reaction. This is what we, we, we are looking at and this is what we call it as a neutron multiplier. So neutron multiplier are needed uh, for formation of tritium formation of deuterium and continuation of the, the reaction as well, uh, fusion reaction as well. Uh, the, you can actually check it like the lithium, we have got st still 9 million tons of lithium mines and there are actually in ocean, we have got concentration of 0.1 part per million of lithium present in the in the seawater as well. So there is no, no, no like, uh, not a shortage of, of lithium or beryllium in the earth. Um, also, if I would say like, alternatively, if I would say like uh, beryllium nine, nine it was used, but alternatively, nuclear fusion, uh, sorry, fission reaction is also used uh, in con for the continuation of the the fusion reaction. As uh, we have said, uh, uh, seen earlier, like when uranium is bombarded, uranium would release three neutron. So that means like in the in the site where the fusion reaction is taking place, we can provide with the fusion reaction as well. And fusion reactor, uh, reaction actually provide the extra neutron to the fusion reaction. This kind of uh, nuclear reaction is what we call it as a hybrid fusion and fusion reactor and which provide the extra neutron to the fusion reaction. But yes, there is actually a little bit disadvantage towards the, towards the uh, uh, nuclear uh, nuclear reaction itself uh, that 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 is like uh, uh, itself the fusion reaction does not have or does not have any radioactive material uh, which is actually produced or there is no byproduct which is actually radioactive while the nuclear fusion reaction we have already uh, uh, early said like it is actually uh, photons and gamma radiation and so on and so forth uh, and obviously the nuclear uh, radioactive elements as well. Uh, so the fission reaction itself is actually having a radioactive uh, product, while the fusion itself does not have any radioactive product. Um, as as mm, nuclear fusion does not have got any waste in it. Um, uh, the benefit of nuclear nuclear fusion power would be Fuel is high energy content. High energy content, as I like per unit mass, fusion reaction is much more than the fusion reaction. Fuel production causes little insult to the environment. We have got the hydrogen, we have got the helium, helium, and these two, two of the material does not cause any, any harm to the environment. While if you are mining uh, uranium and if you are mining any other plutonium or something, so that mean like it, um, it is actually causing too much of the insult to the environment. No dangerous ashes is produced. Radioactive material produced in a fusion fusion plant are 10 to 100 times less hazardous than the fusion plant. 10 to 100 mean like if you are using hybrid, so that would be much a little bit radioactive. But if you are using just fusion reaction, that would be 100 percent less hazardous than the fusion reaction. Vapor dead fission material are not used, so we are only using helium. Or we are using only hydrogen. We are not using uranium. So that's one of the point. Uh, but yes, uh, having said that, um, the production of uh, tritium and the production of deuterium required required uh, neutron 
and for that production of the neutron there is actually a little bit byproduct which is actually uh, which in which we can say like there is a little bit of the the um, i would say like uh, material uh, or the, the the thing which actually was not required um, or which is actually environmental not friendly uh, now we have discussed both the fission reaction uh, and the fusion reaction um, the fission and fusion reaction itself are not only used in a nuclear reactors uh, i've said uh, i've explained earlier that the the having a fusion reaction is still a long way to go uh, but fusion uh, sorry fusion reaction we do not have got a fusion reaction a reactor uh, while fission reactor yes we have got mostly the the or the all of them are actually the fission reactors but nuke, nuclear itself is just not related to the production of the electricity it is also related to weapon program so one class of the nuclear weapon a fission bomb otherwise known as atomic bomb or atom bomb is a fission reactor designed to liberate much more energy possible and rapidly as possible and obviously with an explosion and obviously with the chain reaction that would does not stop um, another class of the nuclear bomb it is actually nuclear bomb or atomic bomb but normally we call it as a hydrogen bomb as we have said uh, seen in the in the fusion uh, which function as a fusion of the lighter nuclei to a heavy nuclei. This kind of uh, uh, bomb actually release large amount of uh, heat energy, and that's what we call it as a therm. That's sometimes it is also called as a thermonuclear bomb as well. Um, uh, in in other, if I just explain it in a, a very in a very quick manner, uh, the nuclear uh, w the function of the nuclear bomb is actually to contain as much or the uh, or to contain as much of the nuclear reaction as possible uh, inside the core and so when it is actually contained inside the core more and more reaction will take place and more and more energy would be produced once the container does not cannot sustain that much amount of pressure or that much amount of heat that would be exploded and once it is exploded it is caused a huge huge nuclear blast so that's what we uh, over here what we are talking about we have got a nuclear fission material fission material inside the core we have got the reflector once the once once the um, nuclear reaction started the the energy would try to release on the outside when it is releasing on the outside actually the reflector will try to push back reflector in terms of the the that can be in terms of mirrors or in terms of magnetic or whatever the case would be so that would try to push the uh, energy back into the core when it is pushing back into the core that means like it will be allowing more uh, neutron available and it will be allowing more chain reaction and obviously it will be having more energy but yes there would be a limitation of this this material itself once that limitation is raised, once that pressure is reached, actually, uh, it it will explode and exploding by releasing that huge amount of energy, what we call it as a nuclear uh, bomb explosion. So, what we are over here is we sh we can talk about the economy of the nuclear uh, fusion and nuclear fission. In 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 our lecture, in the start of a lecture. Uh, we explain that one uh, ton of coal, sorry, one ton of uranium is equivalent to three million ton of coal for the new for a thermal power plant. But that is not as simple as it looked like. As I would say, like uh, the inefficiency um, that come into for the nuclear react uh, reactor itself, or inefficiency in terms of cost come into play when we consider that nuclear fuel create heat that heat is actually supplied to make steam and that steam is actually uh, turn turbine so the, in all these processes there is a huge inefficiency involved this transformation from heat energy to electric energy is cumbersome and expensive 
So if I'm if I'm comparing my 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 country, my own country, nuclear program. So whether we call it as a nuclear reactor or nuclear pro program was was expensive or not expensive. So yes, the country resources was used. A lot of country resources was used in this nuclear reactors. Um, then come up as the cleanup of this nuclear waste. So a large amount of nuclear waste is dumped in somewhere like I would say I do not would go into detail, political detail, but large amount of uh, nuclear waste are dumped around the around the world. Uh, so that caused a huge uh, disaster for the mankind as well. So there is actually, and yes, if you are uh, dumping it very, very, uh, very safe, so that's not so cost effective. And that's amount, uh, that required huge amount of funds as well. So in terms of nuclear fission, we would say like uranium, this amount of uranium energy is equivalent to, to this amount of heat. Uh, and obviously amount of uh, the 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 coal which is actually used but this is definitely an expensive method to to convert the heat energy into the electrical energy now going towards the nuclear fission itself there is actually huge research going on towards the nuclear fission and that is as i said like uh, confined to tokamak technology magnetic technology and even the plasma technology if you are talking about the U.S. programs as well, and also there are other programs as well, all of them cost too much. All of them require much more resources in terms of electricity, in terms of cost, in terms of money, and so on and so forth. So still, I would say like if they say like uh, the the fusion reactor is around the corner or around the next 10 to 15 years, um, I would say like the expense of that nuclear fusion is too much right now uh, this is actually a comprehensive chart uh, comparison of the uh, nuclear fission and nuclear fusion uh, reaction um, as i said a definition nuclear fission is splitting up while nuclear fusion is actually a combination of the two nuclei um, fission reaction does not normally occur in nature while fusion reaction does not occur in earth, on earth but yes it occurs in nature on a sun uh, the byproduct of a nuclear fission are reactive radioactive particles while the byproduct of the nuclear fusion are not radioactive unless and until i've said if you are using the hybrid nuclear fusion and fission uh, uh, the condition for the nuclear fission is you have to provide the critical mass of the substance and high speed neutron are bombarded so that's that that the, the reaction will start while for the nuclear fusion actually high density and high temperature environment is required energy requirement for the nuclear fusion is a little bit less than the energy requirement for the nuclear fusion extremely high amount of energy is required as said 5000 volts that was in one experiment uh, energy release per unit mass by nuclear fission, fission is less than the energy release by um, nuclear fusion uh, per unit mass. So energy release by fusion is three to four times greater than energy release by fission. Uh, one class of a nuclear weapon is a fission bomb. We call it as atom bomb or atomic bomb. Um, while another uh, call as for the, the uh, bomb is uh, the new, from the nuclear fusion is called as the hydrogen bomb, thermonuclear bomb, or and uh, and obviously the um, fusion bomb itself, uh, and that is triggered by the um, fission. Thank you very much. Uh, I I understand like nuclear fission or uh, uh, nuclear energy is quite a huge topic. Uh, I would advise you people if you can. Uh, just go to the I, I, IEA site, which is Inter International Atomic Energy Association site. Just go to them and they have got much more in information about the nuclear um, energy, nuclear technology. You can just search around uh, Google about this uh, thing as well. Uh, I hope you understand a few basics of this nuclear energy and nuclear energy for the thermal, uh, for the thermal power plants.
And thank you very much. Have a nice time.